a giant. It's a giant. So my buddy Scott Rose just called me. You've seen him on the channel a few times before. He's a fishing guide and stuff. Um, one of his clients got COVID and he's leaving tonight to go to the Amazon to go fishing. And he said, if I can get to the airport by 6 p.m., I can come. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I would literally need to pull everything, leave and cut this trip a couple hours short. Hasn't been very productive anyways and pack up all my stuff and just fly. God, I'm so perplexed. Life is insane. So, I'm leaving Key Largo. I'm about, I've been driving for like an hour now. And the flight out of Miami to Brazil leaves at 5.30. So I'm not gonna have enough time to even go home and I've been gone for three days and I haven't showered in three days. And uh, so I'm gonna drive straight to Scott's with my truck and my boat, leave those at Scott's house and ride with him from the airport. And my wife is gonna drive an hour down to meet us at Scott's house and bring my passport, bring my bag, um, bring the son, bring the dog so I can say goodbye to them. And she, I mean, she is the MVP of this whole entire trip and this whole entire video. Uh, she's being so accommodating and making this work and stuff. And so I'm gonna go to Scott's house and we are going to regroup from there. This already has been the longest day of my life and it's about to get 10,000 times longer. I'll have to just tell you how we actually even made it onto this plane flight here, because it was awful, but uh, we're heading to Brazil. I actually do smell pretty bad. Yeah, dude, I haven't showered in four days. I, I that was good news the boat has showered. I literally like it's I feel like such a jabroni that what I'm looking for most is going to take a shower on the boat. I have not showered in three and a half days. I'm looking forward to like, that I've, for you too. I've been that I've been like that gross guy that you sit next to on an airplane and you're like, oh god. It is 3 a.m. in Manaus. We took a red eye from Panama City. We left Miami at six six o'clock basically and uh, we're having a very long day ahead of us we have to take one more plane flight on a little puddle jumper like 20 seater plane into St. Isabel correct yep We are on the Kalua, going down the Rio Negro and the Amazon, heading towards a river called the Yorbashi, which is where the Kalua, the outfitter we're with, does most of their peacock bass fishing. I can't tell you how good it feels to take a shower after having not showered for four days being on that houseboat and then traveling for 20 hours in an airplane. It was maybe the grossest I've ever felt in my entire life. And I feel like a new man. I haven't really slept in like 24 hours now at this point, but we're gonna move down the river. Right now we're inside rigging up gear and soon enough it's gonna be time to chase after some Amazon giants.
Woo. Well, it is finally time to start fishing. Scott and I are in a boat with our guide Alfredo. Uh, everyone else is kind of dispersed in groups of two and it is finally time to start casting out here in the Amazon. I mean, I don't think we've slept in like 40 hours other than like two hour naps on a plane, but I don't think either of us could be more stoked to be fishing right now. And I think we're gonna crack a big one the first night. Someone is. Oh, baby! There's a... First nice one on the trip. Not a big one. We missed a lot bigger today, but this fish popped really nicely on the wall. We made two casts and didn't take long to find. And this one's a Paco Sioux, meaning it has some bars, it has some spots, it's a little bit of everything. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's a really beautiful butterfly with it. Look. It's been very quiet. Got a hit right there. Yeah. No, he's not big. That is a beautiful little peacock bass here. Not at all the size we're looking for out here on the Amazon, but a good, pretty example. This is a butterfly. We will probably run through a ton of these while we're out here on the river, but the real goal is trying to catch the three bar, the very big giant ones that get over 20 pounds. But it's been a fun day, just getting out here in the water after our long day of traveling and throwing after some fish. All right, so we're here kind of finishing up dinner and our first actual night in the boat. We have a ton of assortment of hot foods being down in South America, and the owner of the boat has this seasoning of some type that's in a water bottle that he described it as hot as f bro. So I'm gonna dip my potato in a bit of it and try it. No, I'll think. No, 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 no. no a little more. That was a proper coating on it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm going right back to Warwick. <laughs> Come on, get that second bite in, dude. Was he right? I, I've never experienced. <laughs> Yeah. I've never experienced something before that it doesn't burn your tongue at all. It just feels like fire ants in your throat. <laughs> it's like, it's not good. <laughs> Here, wash it down with this. Yeah, and we have, <laughs> we have pepper sauce and a bottle of Jack Daniels, Gentleman's Jack. Running two on the Kalua here in the Amazon. For some reason, we had an infestation of wasp last night attack the boat, and there was like, probably 30 wasps on our way to our room to Scott and I's room and he got a bunch on him or he had one on him and a bunch is a little dramatic and I had to kill it there is one there's one <laughs> but this morning we walked into the dining hall and there's like six of them flying around in here and we've dispatched them <laughs> it's a table you should just eat it rubber <laughs> Zero flavor. She's gonna come in and get one and wipe the table. <laughs> She's gonna come and wipe the table. I was, I was joking that this was a tablecloth and it kind of tastes like one too. <laughs> oh, it just tastes like absolutely nothing. <laughs> Yeah. 
morning two out here on the Urubashi in the Amazon. Time to catch some big fish today. That's a decent one. Mm -hmm. He's probably right at it. No, he's like five or six. But very pretty. Beautiful. A decent one here on the uh, spook style bait. Absolutely beautiful fish though. <laughs> yeah, he's also, I think he's flared out. Oh, he might be decent. Oh. All right, finally into what feels like a decent one. Not a giant, I don't think. Not the Amazon River monster we're looking for, but. Beautiful giant butterfly, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful big butterfly peacock right there. This is, I guess, one of the smaller species. These probably get what eight pounds is like a giant one. And that is a beautiful three and a half pounder, I bet, and crushed it. Had a moment where we thought this might end up being a big one, but not the giant we're looking for, but a beautiful fish nonetheless. Absolutely beautiful colors on the butterflies. Sweet. Still looking for the giant. I think I might have just hit a pair of them spawning. Yeah. Holy s. There's something in its mouth. Big the thing out. But first, you want film to? it. Yeah. Don't you want to take it out? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know if it'll hurt him or not, but it is. God, that fish is beautiful. Perfect specimen. And then something going on in his tongue is. You want to try and shoot it in there? There's something absolutely wild happening with this fish. Yeah, you can see it. That is a freaking like isopod parasite inside of his tongue. I think it's just holding on. I'm gonna try and see if I can't just... Oh, yeah, it's gonna come right out. Pinch it hard. <laughs> Look at that parasite. Dude, put it up toward my hand just for perspective of how big that thing is. It's like, yeah, look, look at your thumb, like a yeah, finger or something. Don't let it touch me. <laughs> Dude. Wanna get a good release on him? Yeah, you're good. Have you ever seen anything like that in a fish that big? Not that big, no. That is vile. And so Paca's three bar and a Sioux's river. Paca's spot. Paca's spot. And a, spot. And a Sioux's Sioux's three bar. One. Okay. Three bar. Okay. Good? No. Look at that. That is a huge bakuda. And they're beautiful. They have a very cool color tone, actually. Ooh. 
decent. Probably big butterfly maybe. Nice. Yeah. Let's see if he's got a follower on him. And he does. Nice. Doubled up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. A decent one. Yeah. This was quite big that I was worried about. Losing it. Yeah. yeah. This is a good one too. It's a nice double. Pear maybe? Wow, yours is a butterfly. Yeah, mega butterfly, geez Louise. Beautiful double up on butterflies. Mine's sitting back there in the water. We'll release Scott's and grab mine out. Pretty good. It's probably a solid five pound butterfly. Yeah. Really nice. That's one. Beautiful. That's a big double for butterflies. Yeah. Beautiful double up on butterflies there. I actually hooked one up and yeah, man. I hooked up and Scott threw in behind mine that I was fighting and the uh, partner came up and smashed it. These are beautiful and really big butterflies, man. About five pounders each. That is awesome. All right. Ready. Woo. Haven't found the giant yet, but we're having a very good day of just like solid, solid fish. One of the things out here, Amazon, people probably ask a ton about mosquitoes and bugs. Um, there's bugs everywhere. They don't really bite you all that much. I just like have like a million, what I think are like tiny little bees all over me, but they're not stinging, they're not biting. I mean, if I look at Scott, he's got probably like a lot all over his hands. They're hard to see because they're so little, but like I put my hand out here. There's a bunch on my hand right there, on my arm. They are bees looking at Yeah, they are little tiny little bees. I don't know what they are though, but we haven't been stung or bit or anything like that by literally anything, but you're gonna hear bugs in your ears literally all day long. There's like 14 of them on the camera now. <laughs> This is a pretty big one. Hooked. Right underneath the skin. One hook just on the skin. There we go. My biggest arowana ever for Brazil, probably. There's a school of them back there, so I think we're just gonna grab a quick photo. I'll try and get on the camera and let Lawson get one of these things. Very hard to hold fish, but super cool. Okay, time to release. A pretty crazy creature. It's an arowana. Very cool. You're up, dude. Oh, that's like, oh. Big fish. Got him. Big fish. Oh. Oh. I don't know where he went. I never lost tension on him or anything. He's just running. Never broke. Or not? Nope, hooks are all good. Hooks are good. Never lost tension. My line is wrapped in my split ring here. I don't know if that was propped or nothing. Everything's there. And he was very obviously hooked. <laughs> How does that happen?
Another big one. Not nearly as big as the last one, but that's a good one. Get out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just getting them off the trees. Yeah, we're good. Whoo, definitely not as big as that other one. Yep, down. Yep, it's 10 maybe. Wow. That'll make you feel better. Yeah. Back off a little bit here. Try to just keep it down. Yeah, I did. Very colorful fish. On the spook, man. I just had about probably a 15 plus pounder just come unhooked for not really sure why. And I don't know, 20 casts later. Right here. Yeah, there he goes, he's running. Boga or net? What do you want to do on? I don't know, okay. Whatever he wants. Don't matter to me. Yeah. Yeah, this way. Got you. Beautiful fish. I mean, colors are unreal. Boom. Woo! Eh. Wow, finally got a big one. And after dumping another big one, like a minute before that. Beautiful. There is our first double digit of the trip, a 12 pounder. And I probably lost one that had a couple pounds on this guy just a few casts ago. And hopefully this is the first of many. That is our three bar peacock. And the reason we are miles and thousands of miles deep in the Amazon right now is for that fish right there. Unbelievably beautiful. Let's go. Uh, uh, that is a beast. I mean, the most ridiculous colors of all time. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. So in the morning, we could fish in a really good spot. Awesome day, caught a big fish, lost a few big fish, but it's only our first full day really out here. End of the night with a really good dinner, ate some arapaima, had some chicken, rice, beans, and then ended up playing poker with the guys. I mean, couldn't ask for a cooler, more amazing night. We're gonna catch some Z's and get up in the morning and try to catch some more big fish. See you then. Second full day. So pretty much day two. Day two out here in the Amazon, we just snuck through a little sneaky tunnel into a backwater lagoon, and we got more giants to catch. Topped off last night with a 12 pounder. We're really hoping to break a 20. I think if Scott and I were being honest, we, you know, Scott's kind of the host of this trip and he wants everyone to do really well. He wants everyone to catch big giants, but I know him and I both also would like to catch some big giant ones. So we're gonna see if we can make it happen. First 
nice peacock in the morning. Nice butterfly. We just ran for about an hour and a half in the boat and probably traveled, I don't know, close to 35 miles up the river. It was crazy running that far and just seeing a bunch of different birds and everything. We finally made it. Oh, the giant. No, he doesn't have it, doesn't have it, doesn't have it. No, he's got it. No, no, little. There's a different one, two of them. Oh, oh, yeah. Small on the hook side. Let him eat it. Didn't get it. Oh, uh. oh. That was the fish that originally waked, and then that little one sniped it. Uh, medium, medium. Doubled up though. Now we got a constellation fish. Oh, just, yeah, mega butterfly. And in the river, nice. Big. Okay, I got one on the spook. Another morning where we've had a lot of bites and they haven't all necessarily wanted to follow through. This one did. He literally cartwheeled as he ate. Not a giant, but big one. Probably a low double digit and absolutely beautiful. Looks a lot like the fish you caught yesterday, actually. Get a little bit smaller, like a kind of. Second double digit of the trip. About a half pound smaller than the last Real beautiful fish. I absolutely crushed the spoon. <laughs> There's this massive bee on the camera. You're not gonna really hear anything you're saying. That's uh there that's what you get with the Amazon man. Lots of bees and some really big peacocks. Man, that's a pretty one. And good. He's super hardy too. 12.30 in the afternoon and Scott caught about a 12 pounder. It is now lunchtime out here on the skiff. We got some sandwiches and some Coca-Cola. Time to make a move and go see if we can find some more biggins. Amazonian orange, or Brazilian orange. That was green, whatever that means. It was an Amazonian green. <laughs> an Amazonian green, yeah. Tastes like an orange. I'm not sure why I'm eating it like an apple. Tastes like an orange, looks like a green. <laughs> Tastes like an orange, looks like a green. Thanks, Scott. I didn't even know that was on me. Did I looked back at Alfredo, heard a giant blow up. I was watching her. And you said, oh, Biggie, I heard it. He, I looked hard, I was like, shit, that was me. He, he piped it. And then I swung. Uh, not giant, but big. It's crazy how much water they move. Yes. Maybe a little. Yeah, something around that. Thank you. Obrigado. Another one. Good job, Scott. Thanks, dude. <laughs> that was um, brutal. I did not even know that that was on me. Don't worry, I was watching. Made a cast, started walking, looked away. Oh, and this one. Yeah, I bet he's gonna be 14, right? He's uh. 73. 73, so one centimeter bigger than the one I caught yesterday. Okay, that's, that's a foul one, dude. His tail's still in the water a little bit. Yeah, 13. 13. Second big fish of the day for me. This one's a 13 pounder. Just a little bit bigger than the two we've seen so far. Another Paca Sioux with the spots and the stripes. The fish are beautiful this trip. And they're eating, which is good. Ready? Yeah. All right, leveled up a little bit. 
I absolutely love these fish. Uh, honestly, out of everything I target, these big peacocks down here are my favorite. Just got a little bit of everything. I've been telling Scott, this is literally the closest to fishing for big giant snook that you can get. But for the most part, you don't catch giant snook on top water at two in the afternoon and you don't catch, you know, dozens and dozens of them in a day possibly. So this is like a top water fisherman's dream. So I just got hit on the point, set the hook and my line snapped on the hook set. And wasn't quite sure what happened. Scott threw in right after where I got hit gets hooked, my GoPro turned, I turned my GoPro off when I hit, Instantly. and probably what, like 15, 17 pounder? Yeah, 15 to 17. And what does Scott have connected? He throws it on the jump, and then in comes Lawson's lure. So that fish had both of our lures that in his mouth. That fish both lures back to back casts. That is the most insane thing ever. Peacocks are pretty psychotic, dude. Unfortunately, we didn't catch him. Either <laughs> one of us had a chance. But... We put two hooks, two lures into him, and neither of us managed to catch him. It's pretty good. All right. Funny little fish, not really a targeted species, but that is the piranha. A very famous species here in the Amazon for nibbling your pinkies. <laughs> they are everywhere in here. If you throw smaller lures, there's a very big chance you'll catch one. I'm not actually sure what species this is. The famous one you see all the time is a red belly piranha. This is not that. This is the one we saw yesterday. It's like a shimoya or something like that. I'm probably getting it wrong, but it's close. Yeah, different species of piranha. Very cool though. A neat little fish, and they uh, like to nibble on things. It's hard to see, but when you peel them back, they're almost, their teeth are concealed by their gums. When you peel them back, that's when they actually pop out. And I've seen two people get bit, and they do some damage. Got a strong little jaw. On and this is actually our guide told us a different species, and now that we sit here and look at it, you can actually see how gold this fish is, and red, and amber colored, really, really beautiful little piranha. What other colors does it have? Uh, you know, green and, and, and white and other shades of yellow. <laughs> okay, get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Right on him. A little behind, but... There you go. Not that big. Nice butterfly that we're able to say cast out in the middle. Get her back going. And... my friends right there is an arowana, a very neat fish here in the Amazon, very reminiscent of our tarpon back home. These are a little cousin of the arapaima, one of the biggest fish in the entire world. But there aren't too many of them left around these parts, the arapaima that is. The arowana, plentiful, and they are super cool. It's like you mix, mix a uh, tarpon and an eel or a clown knife fish together. There's a lot of them in here. We might try to catch a few of them, but we'll just let this brother go. I see it. So many neat fish, man. That's yeah. kind of the cool part. You know, the goal is catching big giant peacock, but when you have piranhas, arowanas, wolffish, uh, jacundas, bakudas, <laughs> it's great. Back to back. Boom. You guys tied his personal bus today, right? You were saying 22 is the biggest? 
It's what's his. No, but also your guide, you said. Oh, right? yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. Eight breached his biggest. Oh, very good. Legal. So, how many times is your guide? He was pretty excited, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not as excited as I was. I think I was the loudest. I was the biggest guy here. Two years. Okay. But 22, 20, is it? How many trips is that, though, for him? And then probably like in the high six, five, six months a year. Yeah. And they're fishing every day of the week for, this, for that time except for Christmas. That's just what the candy I was talking about last night. Day three in the Amazon in the books. We're our second full day, but third day out here on the river. Um, every single boat caught double digits, multiple double digits. Someone caught a 22 pound peacock, Scott and I. Our biggest fish today was 13. So big fish are going down and hopefully tomorrow will be the day Scott and I catch maybe a upper teener, maybe a big 20. But I mean, couldn't ask for just a cooler experience being here on the Kahlua. Um, you know, having dinner tonight, we ate Pariba, which is like a really cool catfish that lives in the river, had a great, time just hanging around having some drinks talking to the people on the trip it's just such a cool experience and we're sleeping in the middle of the amazon i mean it doesn't get any cooler than that so tomorrow morning hopefully it's gonna happen <laughs> It is day three. <laughs> it's game time, baby. Making an hour run to start the morning. Just jumped out a little point up there. Alright, it's got swirled on, yeah. Got him. It's a good fish. Yeah, decent one. Alright, we are on our first fish of the morning. Thought it was gonna be a big giant one. It's the uh, right kind, just not there, but a beautiful fish. We haven't really caught a bigger one like this to show off, so that'll be cool. All right, that is our paca, or a speckled peacock. Not a giant one, but they are very pretty fish. And these are the same exact species as the three bar, but they get different colorations at different stages of life and where they're living. And that's a beautiful one. We're gonna get him measured and then release him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good peacock, really. It's beautiful. <laughs> he looks at me and goes, slow down a little, slow down a little. Stay tight, stay tight. Okay. All right, we hooked it into a good one here. Down. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. So, we just saw a fish chase bait. And I'm throwing a perversa, which is like a Brazilian version of a subwalk, it's subsurface twitch bait. And I, we're throwing at him, we're throwing at him, nothing happens. And our guide, Pikia, here, he goes, Slow. And I literally, two twitches slower, boom, slammed. And he just starts laughing. Definitely the biggest fish I've hooked of the trip so far. It's been a weird morning, super overcast. It's like 78 degrees, it's a cold day in the Amazon. And the, and fish. the fishing is slow, but we finally got a good one. Look at the hook. Get that net in there. Oh my god. It's not good. It's okay. Good luck. Not sweating it. We'll catch more. Caught through the perversa, a couple casts. Through the perversa, a couple casts. Already hooked a big one. I have full confidence that we can hook another big one. 
Really not sweating it. Truth be told, I was lying to the camera and just trying to save face. It was the biggest fish that we've hooked so far. And after that giant jumped out of the net, I don't think more than 10 words were exchanged in that boat. It was borderline impressive how quiet an 18-foot boat with four men could move through the river unheard. It was a big eat, but it doesn't feel heavy. There it goes. Barbaletra? I don't know. It it looked big, but it doesn't feel crazy. Well, things have been bleak and grim here out in the boat. But uh, through a Proverso, which is a Brazilian style sub walking bait across the sandbar here and got smoked what we thought was going to be a really big peacock bass but it's a huge butterfly peacock bass open up open up <laughs> all right and that right there is another butterfly and a pretty good one i think they max out at like a 10 pounder would be literally an enormous monstrous giant and they fight so much harder than the three bars, but just don't get quite as big. We kind of all thought I had like a 12 pound fish on and then it was just this four and a half pound butterfly. But they are definitely by far the prettiest fish that we're targeting. If they got a little bigger, that'd be cool. But that's what we got the three bars chase after. It's been a slower day today. When the weather is overcast and cloudy, the fish don't bite. They basically are the inverse of every other fish. <laughs> exactly. Good stuff. Scott, what have you done? Um, well, I was snagged. I dropped a lure in the water. Started bouncing it a couple times, and here we are. Butterfly <laughs> peacock scooped it up. But I am still snagged. Let's lift them up. <laughs> Got him. Today was a tough day for the boys. <laughs> kind of explain. So today if you saw there's another person in our boat the whole day, that is actually one of the villagers that lives in a small village around the river. And they actually own the river technically that we're fishing on. And the Kalua, the boat and the operation that we're with, they are the only boat that's allowed to fish in this area. They pay them money, they provide them with jobs. And that's why the young guy was with us today. He's probably 16, 17 years old, a young dude. And it's really, really cool. They are self-policing. We are the only ones allowed to fish this river and they come out and the guides that we have each day record every single fish caught. They have a clicker, they write notes. When you catch bigger fish, they actually take measurements and they take the weight and they write all that down. And today, we had a young village kid who he was sitting there writing everything down and recording all the fish that we caught from the butterflies to the paca, which was a small speckled one I caught. It's really interesting and they're basically providing these people in the village with jobs and also with money, you know? And the kid, he was with us today, probably learning a lot about fishing, guiding, and just doing those things. And he tried to net the fish, fish got away. That's fishing and if uh, that's the price to be paid to see this river and be out here, life's pretty good. We have a lot more days to catch some big fish, so I'm not sweating it. Positive attitude always wins. It's one fish, I have a lifetime more to catch. So we're gonna go inside, drink some drinks, eat some food. That's a satisfying course then. Yes. 
Brazilian Cheers. drink. Cheers. Ready for another night of sleep for another day of peacock bass fishing? Absolutely. Hopefully tomorrow we catch El Gigante. Day four here in the Amazon. It is weird weather. Today and yesterday, it is cloudy and overcast, and if I would have ever said I was cold in the Amazon, it'd feel weird to say, but it's probably running this morning, like was shivering cold. It's not good <laughs> fishing-wise. It's probably not the best. Um, even though it's like 75 degrees, going from 88, 90, probably hotter than that to 75 would be like back home in Florida going from 85 to 45 degrees out so I think the fishing is gonna be tough but there's lots of big fish to be caught first fish of the day another one of the secondary species that we see here a piranha absolutely wicked teeth yeah, you're good. there we go Scott is on. He's in there. I don't even think he's that big. Ooh, crazy colors though. Just a beautiful pocket. Woo! Nice. Ooh. That fish ran way into the balls and somehow the trouble hooks didn't catch any of them. Otherwise that would have been game over. Nightmare. First fish in the morning though. Beautiful pocket. It'll be cool to highlight fish that looks a little bit different from some of the other ones. Seven and a half. Really? These fish fight way harder than the more colorful three bars, the Asus, because they're living in the river, they're fighting the current, and just they just have a lot more power, as simple as that. They release cool. so freaking hard. Nice, Scott. Another paca. This fish made a big blow. We had already went past him, but um, turned around, chased after him, and sure enough, first cast crushed the spook. Thought he was a little bigger, but beautiful. And we'll take it, man. Stay tight, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. Eh, good one, decent one, not giant. Yeah, nice. Whew, gosh, that ate like a freaking truck. That is a beautiful, <laughs> that is a beautiful little speckled peacock right there. Probably about five, five and a half pounds. These fish are so strong for their size and they're beautiful and red and orange. And we hear some more busting, so we're probably gonna let him go quick. Oh, oh my God. Scott's peacock just got eaten by a giant. Let me go underneath here. That's why I told you to cast next to it, dude. On a day where there's sluggish, maybe that would actually bring him in. Should he start reeling yet? No, he doesn't have it. Cast next to it. Yeah. Wow.
back on the heart on it. <laughs> fish of the morning it's the right target just not quite the right size but this is a beautiful paca seal pretty much exactly what we're looking for just maybe five times six times smaller but still a nice fish on the chopper and hopefully the start of a good final full day out here oh there we go Balsa. Yeah. Throw that on the balsa. Big camera. What the hell is that? What is that? Dude, this is a drum. Yeah, it is. We gotta yeah. film that. Oh, darn. That's all right. We gotta film that. Oh, very cool. Corvina? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is literally a freaking South American redfish. <laughs> nice. That was awesome. I started slowing down my twitches and just doing really short, fat ones. Grande barboleta. <laughs> wow, that is a giant butterfly, huh? Didn't really fight much at all. We need the butterfly near the bank and those other ones out here. Oh, man. All right, that is a big old five and a half pound butterfly. They hit so freaking hard. But the second I hooked this one, I knew it wasn't the giant we're looking for. The fishing is better today. We had a cold front rolled through the past two days and now the fish seem to chew, want to chew a little more. Scott took two big ones. We moved a couple big fish. Not the target species right there, but that thing is unbelievably pretty. Nice, hammer them. That is a massive butterfly. Yeah. Holy cow. Butterfly. That's a big one. He's like right around six. There is a really big butterfly. We thought it was, uh, honestly, when these things hit, they hit so much harder than the Asus and the Pacas. And they always seem like 
he got a double digit fish. But there's a lot of four or five pound, even six pound butterflies out here in numbers and they do a great job filling up the day in between those big bites. Fry right there. Oh. 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 All right, we're still on the hunt for a giant peacock. What we, what we, oh, there he goes. There's something under him. I don't know. What we thought was gonna be. A big old peacock was in fact about an eight pound monster arowana and he's gone. But we're still searching for the big one. But this looks like a good spot. Say what? Oh my it's a giant. god. It's a giant. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. It's already worse. Oh my god. I don't know much to say right now. Big giant fish off of fry ball is all that needs to be said. Me and you are both barely breathing right now. I can't talk. Giant. I hate where he's at right now. Let's head down, head down. He ate it going sideways and he had it for a second. So I, think I, was letting him, I was letting him I was letting him get it. Yeah, I, I think he's got it okay. It's fine. I didn't feel weight yet. I saw him swipe on it, but I didn't feel weight yet, so I was Burying the rod in the water. The last thing we want to do is. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Here it comes. Ooh, it, corner, corner. But one hook from the corner. He can net it. I push him to net it. Here it comes, here it comes. No, I know, I know, but I'm telling you, it's coming up because I can see it. Here, here. Didn't like that. We're loose. No, no, no. Oh, yes. You got it. Yes. You got it. <sighs> <sighs>
Thank you, Pika. Oh. Everything Go. about that was terrible. Oh. Go. Go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go. Calm. Good job. Good job. Good job. What a fat one, dude. Oh my god. Let's just let's just get this thing in the boat. And get We've the, I'm and full on shaking. We've been grinding like no other, trying to catch a big fish. That's I can't. Dude, that, might be, that might be 20. Well, 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 we have had a long couple of days. To be honest, everyone else on the, the on the Kalua, the main boat, is doing really well catching big fish. And Scott and I haven't been doing so hot. And we finally caught our giant that we're here in the Amazon on the Kalua chasing after. That is a huge freaking peacock bass. Weighs 18 pounds and guess what? They can get 10 pounds bigger than this, which is insane to think about. I'm gonna give this big boy for it. Right? Big man some water real quick and then uh, we'll snap a few photos. Right at 80. 18 pound 80, that's a fat one dude. All right, we're gonna release the big man. Hey, what? Oh, sorry, sorry. No problem. Hey, he wanted a photo too. My bad. We've been grinding our butts off trying to catch some big fish. The boat's been doing really well, and I just think it's been humbling. Scott and I haven't done that great. I, I, I mean, I think over 12 to 14 double digits have been caught over the past few days, just not by Scott and I. And uh, we finally got our big fish that we're here for. Thanks to you. Thanks, Scott that we're out here It is our final day of fishing out here on the Amazon and we're cruising down the Rio Negro, one of the main tributaries of the Amazon River. Hopefully we got some big fish today. They, I bet they see the fish swimming in the river and they literally throw pools pool speed in. I got my double digit yesterday. Scott needs to hopefully whack another bigger one today because he's got, what, two or three double digits this trip, but just lower ones. And we're in a different, different section of river. We made a mile run on, or a mile, made like an hour and a half run on the Rio Negro this morning. It was crazy. And uh, now it's time to catch some fish. And there goes our boys, Jacob and John. On our last day out in the river, I was happy to ride shotgun and take a boat ride through the Rio Negro and watch Scott fish. I really didn't throw all that much, and when I did, I was trying to catch anything other than peacock bass. I was just sitting back and really enjoying 
our last day out in the water. It does look really good. Might be a catfish. <laughs> it's actually a big catfish. Feels heavy. Oh wow, it's literally a catfish. Catfish? Pure. Catfish. This is what we, this is what we've been training for. Can you lift them at all or no? No. Thing rare catfish. It doesn't feel like that stingray honestly did, but this I, if this actually worked, I'm gonna lose my mind. Let's see. Sting stingray? No no. Uh Piriba. <laughs> so I've been telling Scott since I got my big fish yesterday, I want to screw around and see if I can catch a catfish, and I was dragging the bottom with a jig. I either have a stingray, and it's a stingray because I just saw it. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's cool looking. That is sweet. He actually ate, right? I don't know, it's in his nose. Yeah, maybe not. Ate a head first, at least. He was, it was in his, his nozzle direction. I can't believe just how, like, it, it's just a circle. Like, there's no... <laughs> Coming in. Coming in. Wow. That is unbelievable looking. I'm telling you, dude. He's awesome. Holy cow. Well, that's not something you see every day. No, he's not. Big fish. <laughs> so, that is a species of Amazonian. So, that is a species of Amazonian short tail ray that just. <laughs> took a giant pee on the boat. <laughs> Unbelievably cool animal. You can tell that thing is just designed to disappear in the bottom, in the sand. And there's no big giant stinger unless someone cut it off, cut this thing's tail off. I don't think doesn't, it did. doesn't look like it. But it has a tiny little bristles all over top of it. But what a neat fish. Or what a neat ray. Good. Be careful with that stinger when it hits the water. Yeah, all right. We're going to just release Buddy pretty easily here. That is a... <laughs> it wouldn't feel right to catch something strange and weird here in the Amazon. I'm going to keep trying to flip fish the bottom and see what else we can catch on our final day here in the Rio Negro. Our first peacock of the day, and probably our last peacock of this trip. The Negro didn't really show out for us. Water's up very high since we left and went into Jirabashi, but beautiful fish. Seriously, one of the most beautiful fish of the week.
That's what they recommend. So I'm gonna do it. It's not awful. <laughs> a different way. Like not necessarily like. I don't think it's as hot as I thought it was gonna be when they said it's it. Surprisingly it's like, hot. It? It's good though. It is. No, it's it's very that's flavorful. Good. I think that's good. Big Cox and Gila. Thank you, guys. Yes. It was more than human, and the heat was more than hungry. The cars were square and spinning, these so few.
Who actually get the the feet oh the food here and the smash with the tongue because there is no thief. This is a like a suck. <laughs> <laughs> so all these arapaima that you're seeing out here in these floating docks are actually being raised for meat and there is wild arapaima in the river but in Brazil and the Amazon they've transitioned a lot to actually just farm raising them to help with sustainability and the numbers of them and so they've kind of turned this into a farming practice and ecotourism where you come out you eat lunch so we're gonna have lunch and eat arapaima while you get to feed the arapaima and it's a really cool process and they float on the river they get fresh water by floating the pins are a little small but they are farm food technically so it's a very interesting and fun operation after the fun time at the Arapaima farm and a great lunch, it was time to head back to the hotel and rest up before our long night of traveling ahead. It's 11.40 p.m. I have to catch a... It's 11.40 p.m. We have to catch a flight out of Announce at 3.30 in the morning. Red Eye, all the way to Panama City, the Panama City to Miami. 11.30 right now, we'll be arriving at Miami at 11, 11 a.m. It'll be a long day. Slow a little down is what they said. I'ma get it all up in my head. White t-shirt, blue jeans, I'm looking at, I get enough of you. Bright sneakers on, getting ready for a flashback. <laughs> I don't care. Boots here. Don't worry, Mama ran for you. Sneakers on, getting ready 